guys what's up in this video i just want to do a quick side by side comparison of the new ui compared to the previous one so this is a design that me and my uh, team did for a client uh, obviously this video is not about a design it's more about the updated ui that figma has so fortunately i actually have um, a file that's on the older uh, or a team that's on the older UI and a team that's on the newer one. And one thing that I can see right off the bat, well actually let's just take a screenshot of both and compare them side by side. So here is a screenshot of both of these screens side by side. Actually let's just have them up and down. So the first thing that you actually see here is the top bar is gone in the new UI. So that does definitely save a lot of space. It's now at the bottom and it's floating. So I mean, it definitely takes less real estate. I think the file just being highlighted at the top, like for example here, did really did wonders for me because I can just go ahead and click on it to rename it. I can click on this to go to the folder. Whereas now I actually have to go to the sidebar to rename it and then click on this small text to actually go to the folder, which isn't always that ideal, but at least it's there. The other thing is, uh, as a comparison, if you talk about this, uh, the screen or the real estate that has been saved. So for example, this is the minimized or the least size that the sidebar can take. Obviously this is the larger one, this is the smallest one. And the same goes for the sidebar on the left, on the right as well. So if we just measure these things, so this sidebar roughly takes this space. And if we have a look at this comparison, so the sidebar along with the rulers are definitely not taking as much real estate in the previous ui if we go and do the same thing for the right hand sidebar and we compare it here so as you can see it also is not taking that much real estate obviously we have a scroll bar here so but it still was taking a bit less space in the previous version so the space argument is definitely out of the picture uh, the modern argument can definitely be there but a few things that i've actually noticed is if you have a look at the sidebar for example here in the pages Unfortunately, I actually accidentally clicked this pages button multiple times considering how how similar the size and the font size and the font weight of this heading is compared to this particular text. I actually, for some reason, instinctively started clicking on this for some reason. I thought the pages thing was actually another page and I was doing that even though I can see that there's a plus button and there's a drop down. But when you don't really focus on these things and you're just looking at it from your peripheral vision, you actually just see that these two things are very similar. Whereas if we compare this on the right hand sidebar uh, or sorry, on the left hand sidebar of the previous layout, we can actually see that the pages thing is very differentiated. You have the check mark here to highlight which page you're active on. So there definitely can never be uh, or the likelihood of you mistaking this pages for an actual page is severely down because the hierarchy is much well established in the previous UI. But anyways, I mean, that's uh, done about the previous UI. One thing that I do want to point out that I really hate is if we, let's say, go to this particular uh, sidebar and if we check out the height or the tap area of these elements. So I'm going to select this. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take a screenshot of this. And I'm going to go here and I'm going to take a screenshot of this as well. And we're going to compare both of these things side by side and see what the difference is in the tap area. So if we compare this, I'm just going to measure this. The tap area here is about 33 pixels or it can be 32. But the tap area here is about 30, what? 24 pixels. So a huge difference in terms of accessibility and tapping the things. Um, coming to some of the things that I do like about this new sidebar is the fact that if we, let's say, go to our designs, let's say this is a design that we did for a client. If we go select a button, that's a component. Let's see. I think this one is probably a component on the component sidebar. You actually have some of your, uh, component properties on the right, because this is a component and they're highlighting these component properties, which is great. So I think that's good. You can also adjust the auto layout directly from here as well. If you hover over these things, you actually see the size written, even though it is hug contents, but you see the size written. This can be an upgrade. This can also be a downgrade because when you're hovering on it, you don't really see whether this is hugging the container, whether this is filling it, what exactly is going on. You wouldn't be able to see it, but still we can give this uh, a plus point. The other great things that I can see on the sidebar are if we go into effects, you actually have different 
uh, icons to represent what type of effect is actually being applied. So this is really good. And if you click on it, you also have these things laid out vertically rather than in a grid layout, which I think I personally like, but obviously this is completely subjective and I don't necessarily think that people can have a very strong opinion about it. Very similarly, if we go here as a comparison, just going back, I'm gonna detach this and this is what it used to have previously. So just as in a comparison, that's what we have. One thing that I really hate about this new sidebar is the fact that if I actually was to combine these two things, I can directly go at the top and I can let's say click and say I wanna subtract them and it was there right next to the thing that I was doing and I can do all of these things related to this particular thing directly by going to the top bar. But now if I have to do something very similar, I select it, I don't really know where to go. Oh, I need to go on the right hand sidebar. So on the right hand sidebar, I need to go on this particular small, can you just check how small this particular thing is. So just check this, this icon. This icon, check how small this tab area is for me to actually get these controls, the subtract selection compared to what I have here. I don't know how big that is, but let's just go ahead and actually do a comparison. So I'm gonna draw this. And as you can see, this is roughly about 48 by 48. And we're gonna do the same thing here as well. And the rough difference, I think, the width is 14 pixels and the height is 22 pixels compared to 48 by 48 pixels. Can you imagine that? I mean, how can you even come up with this thing? And very similarly, let's also compare what we have on the right here for these icons. And I think this is probably going to be about 22 by 22. Now let's imagine I'm in an organization. I'm in Mattermost. I work for Mattermost. And in Mattermost, I say, okay, the sidebar is taking too much space or the header is taking too much space. We wanna condense the layout down. And I say, hey, why don't we just go ahead and actually reduce all of the buttons from 40 pixels to 22 pixels? Or let's reduce the icon buttons that are a standard of let's say 32 by 32 pixels to something like 16 by 16 pixels. What do you think my team is gonna say or any sensible designer is gonna say? They're gonna say that's against accessibility. I mean, you cannot break accessibility just to reduce the size of the UI. I mean, that's basic knowledge. Problem is with certain designers and certain fanboys of certain products that if Apple makes a mistake like this, or if Google makes a mistake, or if Figma makes a mistake, they try to justify that decision. They try to talk about how, hey, that particular action isn't really used, so why should it take that much priority, or some other stuff like that. I mean, that action doesn't necessarily need to be visible all the time. It can only be visible when you select two rectangles or two shapes or whatever, and then you can give it much more prominence and you can make it large. That's not necessarily gonna affect all of the layout. So there are ways to make it much more accessible like before, but just if someone who's in a top organization make a mistake or they do something that's against accessibility, fanboys are just gonna find ways to justify it. They're gonna say, hey, how, that's a million dollar, a billion dollar company. I don't give a crap. And we just have to appreciate them. We don't, I mean, we have to call people out on things that don't really make sense to us and that actually hinder performance. So, I mean, it is what it is. One other thing that I just wanted to highlight for you, just in case you actually don't find it. If you have a library and it gets updated, the library update is now actually going to be seen here. Obviously the icon and the button is actually much smaller compared to what we previously had on the top right, but it may be in slightly close proximity to the assets panel. So maybe the accessibility around this is gonna be much better because it's in relation to that. So just wanted to point that out as well. So that's pretty much it for this review. Do subscribe to hit the bell icon and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye.